Hello guys and welcome to Vlogging Project. Today I've got something rather interesting, the ZT Nubia My Prague. Could the Chinese manufacturing blend well with the Eastern European traditions? Let's find out. Okay guys, let's get the embossing out of the way first. We've got our trolling sticker here. Books, SIM ejection tool, our beautiful phone. Noodle cable and a charging brick which does miracles but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later on on the review so let's have a look at the phone itself check this out guys absolutely amazing but before I talk about the design and build quality I want to mention something about the specifications first we've got a 5.2 inches 1080p AMOLED screen 8 core Snapdragon 615 3 gigs of RAM 32 gigs of storage micro SD card slot, 13 megapixel rear camera, 8 megapixel front facing camera and 2200 milliamp hours of battery. These are the main specs of the phone guys. So let's quickly have a look at the build quality. I've picked up the gold version because that's the one with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. The other silver and white version has only 16 gigabytes of storage and 2 gigs of RAM. So let's have a look, we've got a metal back over here which really feels nice and sturdy, it doesn't leave any marks which I'm overly happy with. The Nubia logo is very nice and gold as well. We've got a single speaker over here, this side is plastic, that one is plastic as well. Microphone, 13 megapixel camera, flash. At the front we've got our speaker grill which is quite small but the audio coming out of it is excellent so you're not going to have problems hearing what people say. We've got a bunch of sensors over here, the front facing camera 8 megapixels, the Nubia button here, two hidden soft buttons over here. On the side we've got our Bixby <laughs> button here, um, that's a SIM tray for a second SIM card and a micro SD card. Over here that's our first SIM card here. On this side we've got our power button and the volume rockers. At the bottom we've got 3.5mm jack and as you can see I'm really happy that although the phone is very very slim they managed to put the uh, 3.5mm jack. We've got a micro USB and a second microphone. So let me tell you guys this is a small phone. This is a small phone. Check this out compared to the Moto Z you can see what's the difference. And although the Moto Z is crazily slim, this one is almost as slim as the Moto Z. So, yeah, not very big. 2.5 inches feels absolutely great in the hand, guys. That, that's, that's a one-hand device. Absolutely one-hand device. I really love the bottom placement because the power button is just over here at your thumb. The volume rockers are very easy to reach. The only problem I've got is this button over here, the Bixby button. <laughs> I mean... You have no idea how many black and green and red photos I've got inside my pockets. But you can't really get rid of it. It is what it is. Okay, let's have a quick look at the screen, guys. And let me tell you, that's an absolutely beautiful Full HD 5.2 inches AMOLED screen. And before we went, before we go directly to the screen, let me show you the unlock screen animation, which I really love on the Nubia device. See how the image disappears. And in this case, it's going to take us directly to the gallery. So as you can see here, the colors pop. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful screen, guys. I can't really say anything bad about the screen. The blacks are really black. They turn off 100%, unlike the Motorola Droid Turbo, for example. The viewing angles are crazy as well. Check this out. The sunlight visibility is excellent as well. So the screen, let, let's have a look at some other images. The screen is absolute go. For me, thumbs up to ZT is a beautiful 5.2 inch screen. <laughs> Maybe it's better than the one on the OnePlus One. Ah, on the OnePlus One? No, on the OnePlus Three actually. <laughs> Probably that's a better screen than the one on the OnePlus Three, which is ridiculous because this phone came out in July 2015, guys, and that screen was, I mean, seriously number one when it came out. So let's talk about battery life quickly. The phone has 2200 milliamp hours of battery and I mean it's a pretty decent size considering how slim the phone is and let me tell you that the recharge times of this battery are absolutely ridiculous let me show you what are we talking about 
as you can see over here, I'm going to zoom in for half an hour. I'm getting 69% guys. That's absolutely unseen by me before. And for one hour, as you can see over here, one hour, I'm getting 94%, which means in about one hour, 10 minutes, one hour, 15 minutes, you're getting a 400% of the battery charge. But mind you, that's possible only with the default charger which comes in the box. If you use any kind of fast charging, it's not going to work on this phone. But anyway, now, one thing which really differentiates me from the, all the rest of the channels, they usually say, oh, the battery is gonna, <laughs> you know, the battery is gonna get you through the day. Well, you know what? That's bullshit. And that's just not good enough. You can't say the battery is gonna get you through the day because of course it's gonna get you through the day. But at what time? At 4 o'clock? At 6 o'clock? When is gonna die? Through the day. That's absolute crap. And let me show you my absolute real-time usage of the phone, guys. And uh, have that in mind that this phone lacks band 20, which means that the phone is constantly searching for better reception because it doesn't support the 4G, especially here in Europe. So you have a little bit of a hit on the battery life because of the lack of band 20. Also, this phone is a dual SIM phone. So if you use two SIM cards active at the same time, your battery is going to take a little bit of heat as well. So let me show you what are my real battery life statistics, guys. And let me tell you that usually I'm getting like the worst out, out of the phones. So you might get a little bit more. Let's have a, let's have a quick look. Now, as you can see over here, that's less than a day, three hours, eight minutes. A day, 2 hours 25 minutes. Again a day, 3 hours 26 minutes. A day again, 2 hours 40 minutes. One day, 2 hours 13 minutes. 2 hours 34 minutes. A day again, 2 hours 7 minutes. 2 hours 11 minutes. 2 hours 34 minutes. 1 hour 56 minutes. 1 hour 54 minutes. 3 hours, 5 minutes, almost 3 hours here. So as you can see, almost 3 hours of screen on time, guys. Basically between 2 and 3 hours. Why? Why is that so? 2 hours because 2 SIM cards, one of them active all the time on HSDPA+. The other one for phone calls, a little bit of gaming, a lot of interneting. So that's why 2 hours. If you stay at home, if you don't do much, a lot of gaming, you probably get about three hours of screen on time and something else when it comes down to battery life when you play one hour youtube on max brightness and max volume that's what you're getting one hour 78 percent which means that the, the phone drained about 22 percent of its battery and considering how small this battery is and it has to power uh, this full HD screen, it's kind of, it's kind of understandable. I mean, don't get me wrong, we are not talking about a battery champion over here. So, let's get to our next section, which will be the sound. When it comes down to sound output, you really don't expect it to be on the ZT Axon 7 level, right? But, however, I'm happy to report that when you plug a pair of headphones, in my case the Sennheiser HD212, which are the best headphones under 30 bucks, you can check them in the description down below. The volume is of a very high level, the bass is strong, and you can tweak the equalizer by Dolby Atmos. So, headphone output, I would say really, really good on a really high level, guys. Now, when it comes down to the sound coming out of this single mono speaker here, actually, I'm surprised. Because on plenty of phones, you've got one speaker. Actually, let me show you his cousin, the Nubia Z7 Max. We've got one speaker here, we've got one speaker here. This one is rubbish, okay? You probably already watched my review. This one is bad. This one is how it's supposed to be. And considering how thin the phone is, it's loud enough. Actually, it's louder than most single firing speakers. The sound is probably on the same level as the LG G4, but it sounds probably a little bit better. So basically, in noisy environments, you're going to have absolutely no problems hearing the speaker over here, guys. Let me quickly play something for you so you can see for yourself. Check this out. 
As you can see, it's pretty loud, it's pretty good. Thumbs up from me on the headphone output and on the sound output coming out of this single speaker. Now let's have a look at the camera. We've got 13 megapixel at the back, 4 by 3 ratio. Over here we've got 8 megapixel. And let me tell you something. It might sound strange to you, but this camera is actually better than the 21 megapixel camera on the Axon 7. Why? Because I've already reviewed the Axon 7, I've upgraded to NuGet, and the camera on this phone sucks. Which is a shame. But the camera on this phone, oh man. Let me show you. Let me show you what this camera is capable of, and you will be absolutely amazed. Now, first off, low light capabilities, well, as expected, not very good. As you can see over here, not very good. This one is quite nice actually this one over here is with HDR the built-in one this is without HDR again HDR without HDR I've decided to shoot at 10 megapixels simply because the aspect ratio goes to 16 by 9 which is the aspect ratio that I love not the letterbox 4x3 I really don't know why they keep doing this with the cameras so these pictures that you're gonna see are only 10 megapixels guys and uh, let me show look at that look at that just look at that by the way if you want to see a full size samples of these beautiful pictures head over to google plus follow me on vlogging project over there i'm uploading full size photos and some other extras to my videos so have a look at it down below check this out look at that absolutely phenomenal guys if you want to test the bokeh effect as you can see what i did over here i focus here and over there is blurry. The other way around. Over here is on focus. This one is blurry. Thumbs up. Not a lot of phones can do that. Check this out. Low light. Auto mode. Low light. Manual mode. Yes, you've got manual mode. Night time. It's not that bad really. Now, my advice to you is don't use the built-in HDR. Shoot the photo as it is. And after that, edit it with the built-in editor to get your HDRs ready. Check this out. Check this one out. If you want to take a picture of a document or something like that, as you can see, the economy of the UK is here. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, absolutely ridiculous camera, guys. One more thing. One more thing I want to mention about the cameras. When you go over here, you've got the quick shortcuts here. There are plenty of them. You've got multi-exposure, light painting. LA, electric aperture, slow shutter, a bunch of stuff. You can play around with the camera for days. And let me tell you what I love in the built-in gallery. Depending on the mode you shoot, it automatically arranges the photos. As you can see, camera here, front camera here, multi-shot, slow motion. You've got slow motion. It's not very good, but anyway. Video, light painting, screenshots, download video samples. Now let's have a look at the front camera. 8 megapixels. It offers plenty of detail, as you can see, my ugly face here. It's not much washed out, plenty of details, especially over here on my beard. It's not the best over there, but for 8 megapixels and for what it is, thumbs up from the front facing camera. Check this out. Light painting. Absolutely phenomenal, guys. And that's even without a tripod. That's with my bare hands. And the best thing about it is, look, it automatically saves a short video showing how you did the light painting. I really love this in the Nubia phones. What else I'm going to show? Slow motion, there's no point of showing you. It's not very good, basically. It's useless. What else? The video. Let me show you this video. Okay, guys, so let's see how the Nubia MyPrac performs. When videotaping, as always, holding the phone with one hand. And uh, mind you, in the settings menu, the only option you've got is just to reduce the resolution to 720p. So you've got no stabilization, no manual controls for the video, basically you've got nothing. Uh, 
But anyway, I'm I'm quite happy with the camera so far, and I think that the video should be should be good as well. So let me shake it up a little bit like that, a little bit like that, just to see if if there is any sort of stabilization going on. Uh, that's a nice Aston, by the way. So let's see, let's see what we have. See you later. Oh, I had to tap that. <laughs> All right. And as you can see, there is no image stabilization digital, there is no optical image stabilization. Basically, if you want to shoot the video, you got to use the tripod, then the quality is good in 1080p. Otherwise, it's a little bit shaky, a little bit noisy, so the video is eh, meh, basically. Now, let's talk about gaming performance, overall performance, and software a little bit. As I showed you a little bit earlier, I really love the animation when you unlock your screen. And now something very important, when you buy this phone out of the box, it's gonna come with Android 5.0.2 and it's gonna run the Czech software, which is rubbish. And not because it's the Czech software, it's just because the default software which the device shipped back in September 2015 guys that's almost two years ago and you're gonna get no OTA on this phone so to solve this issue what I did was I flashed a custom recovery to Verpa <laughs> I rooted the phone I went to ZT's official Chinese website I've downloaded the latest firmware which is from December 2016 and I flashed it to the phone so what do we get now Now we have, where is it, Android 5.1.1 and the kernel is from December 2016. That's the software that you want, simply because the differences are that in this software you've got better overall performance, it feels a little bit more snappy, although the Snapdragon 615 it runs 8 cores which are Cortex A53, these are low power cores, 4 of them are clocked at 1.5 GHz, uh, 4 of them are clocked at 1 GHz, and it, li and it really struggles to power on this Full HD screen guys. But with this firmware the overall performance is improved and also you've got teams. As you can see I'm running one of the teams over here, which changes the background of the settings the icons of the settings, the quick toggles over here, the wallpaper, the lock screen and the icons. And let me tell you, when you go to the team store, you've got a little bit of a Chinese blow by the way, you can of course you've got already root so you can uninstall. So these are the teams that I've downloaded and each one of them I just like so much. I mean let, let's put this Nubia one, let's put this one. Have a quick look. Configuration success. Check this out. You've got a nice golden icons which go really well with the overall design of the phones. This one is changed as well. When we go to the menu, everything is changed. So that's the new and most important thing in this firmware. You can download hundreds of teams in the team store. Most of them are actually free and they are all pretty good. So basically this that, that's one of the best team stores I have ever seen on a phone, especially tons of good you know, free teams, so thumbs up to ZT of including that. Well, thumbs down for not including the OTA, but anyway. Now, with the Chinese version, you're running Lollipop, and despite that, you've got some features only present in the Nougat update, which is the split screen multitasking. You can play your video over here, minimize the screen a little bit like that, and over here you can just browse uh, Chrome or whatever you like. So, do you really need Nougat? I don't think so. So, what's, what's, what's different in this phone? The Bixby button over here, <laughs> which you can see in the Galaxy S8. It's not programmable by default, but if you download this application over here, the button mapper, and you pay for the premium version, basically you can reprogram any of the buttons of your phone. I really recommend this application. So what I did 
Well, I can switch off the screen with the power button. Also, I can switch off the screen with this button. You can program the single click, but also you can program the long click. So you hold it like that, and it activates. Hello! <laughs> and it activates the camera, basically. So, pay for this application. I don't remember how much I've paid for it, but anyway, it's worth it because you can program all of your buttons or you can switch it off if you like. Uh, the other thing, the other thing which is Nubia exclusive is those buttons over here. I don't know, I mean, the light is not very good, but there are two small buttons over here which light up when you press them. Now, the thing that I don't like is that you can't really control of the settings of whether these buttons should light up, whether this one should light up. I mean, you don't have such settings. And the other thing which is really annoying is that this button by default over here is a menu button. Well, ZTE, I don't want a menu button. I want a recent applications button. Of course, you can program with that with the buttons mapper as well. The thing is that there's a little bit of a delay. And one more thing, to keep this application running in the background, you just hold it like that. Because otherwise, if the process gets killed, your button is going to become inactive and after that you're going to come back to here, blah, blah, blah. You get my point. Now, this ring over here not only lights all the time, but it's used as a notifications LED, which I really love. That's a distinctive feature of the Nubia phones as well. Now, I'm not really big fan of benchmarks, but I came to something a little bit strange over here. Let me show you. These are my results. So, system excellent, which means that the phone is quite snappy when going through the system to the settings and this and that. The memory is very good, which means that they've used not a cheap Chinese memory. Okay, maybe it's again Chinese, but it's not cheap. And basically, if you download a couple of applications or do multitasking, the memory is not going to let you down. Graphics, mm, I'm not quite sure about this one. Web, I really have no idea what it is and why we have a minimum. And overall, pretty bad according to this benchmark. So basically, it doesn't give you a very good idea. But let me tell you something. When you load up, when you load up some applications, let's just do Google Plus, for example. As you can see, the loading times are reasonably good. When Google Plus is loaded, let's have a quick look. I mean, it's not, it's not the best in the world, you see. Um, when you go to your notifications, it takes a little bit of time. Um, what else? Let me open up Chrome, for example. Let's open up, uh, what, Hot UK Deals. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time. Basically, it takes a little bit of time to load the applications, but once you're inside the applications, it's okay. It's, it's, it's bearable. I mean, the performance, the performance is fine. The day-to-day -day tasks are fine. But, a huge but over here. And that's the gaming performance. So when we go to Epic Citadel, I really like Epic Citadel because it gives you real-time results of what your gaming performance will be. On Full HD, high quality, I've got 56 FPS, which is great. However, and that's a big however. Full HD again, ultra high quality, 29 FPS, which is ridiculous. And the problem is that most applications are trying to push the ultra high quality that they've got built in. And that's the more realistic expectations you're going to get from the gaming. And uh, <laughs> I mean, before I show you the gaming, let me say something. It's bad. It's really bad. However, if you have rooted your phone, flash the developer, flash the Chinese firmware, you have the ability to go to this handy little program over here, Kernel Adutor. What you gotta do over here is go to CPU, the first cluster from interactive, put it to performance, the second cluster performance, go back to GPU, performance again, and load up your game. Now let me tell you, although you've put it on performance, it's not gonna, the battery is not gonna take a huge hit simply because the phone is struggling to power this Full HD screen anyway. The difference in the battery life is not gonna be significant, but at least you're gonna make 
games playable again. Because as I said earlier, on the default settings with the check firmware, it's ridiculous. Let me show you what I'm getting now. Check this out. I mean, you can see a little bit of stuttering going on. But remember, that's with the performance settings. Without the performance settings, this game is more or less unplayable. Check this out. Let's just explode. Yes. Now the second game that I usually load... Uh, by the way, you've got the accelerate button. Where is this? Accelerate. Yeah, you press the button from time to time. I don't know what it does. Cleans the cache, kills the apps, whatever. But it's just too nice. <laughs> it's just nice to have this button. Now let's play Mortal Kombat. Of course, the loading times are ridiculous. Since the last update, it takes way more. So I'm gonna pause the video now and come back when it's loaded. Let's get it on. <laughs> now, I'm filming only on 30 FPS. So the performance is actually a little bit better than you see on the camera. So, what would I say about the performance? As you can see, Mortal Kombat is absolutely playable. So, when you put everything on performance mode, then yes, games are kind of alright. But if you keep the stock ROM, the gaming performance is absolutely ridiculous. So, Snapdragon 615 with Full HD screen, nah. Nah. Just nah. So before I end up this video, let me talk about pricing a little bit. The original price of this phone is about 300 euros guys, which is a little bit on the expensive side, especially in 2017. However, I managed to get my one for only 150 euros, which was a crazy price and I just couldn't miss it. But at the moment, if you look deeply inside the internet, and then I open up Kimo View, um, <laughs> you can probably find it for about 180 or 200 euros, which is a very good price. Simply because you've got an amazing screen, you've got a top flagship camera over here, and you've got this sexy looking design and overall amazing build quality. So, if you're a light user, or you're buying your phone for mom, sister, girlfriend, this phone is absolutely a go for me. On the other hand, if you're a heavy user like me, if you don't want to charge your phone 4 o'clock in the afternoon once again, and if you do a little bit of gaming, that this phone is definitely not for you guys, because the performance, and especially the battery life, is just not there. So, if you're a heavy user, thumbs down, but overall I'm quite happy with ZTE, I'm looking forward to getting some new ZTE phones because I already did the Z7 Max, I already did the Axon 7, I'll probably get uh, Z9 Max after that, who knows, or probably something else. What's coming by the way, I've got the Moto Z over here, I'm gonna do a couple of comparisons with the Axon 7 as well. So thank you very much for watching my video guys, hit the thumbs up if you liked it, I know it's a little bit long but at least it's comprehensive and uh, I will be really happy if you got all the information that you needed. So if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel as well, um, what else, check my other old videos, why not, some of them are pretty good, some of them not that good, but anyway, thank you very much for watching again guys and see you in the next one.